Let's talk about analytics in this video. This is one of the things which we recently shipped on Formion. I tweeted about it and got some interest on how this exactly works. If you look at it carefully, this is typically how most analytics products work like. You have page views, you have visitors, which are like the number of people, unique users who are visiting. Then you have a top refers column, top pages, operating system, countries, and browsers. This is all we support. It's very basic right now. But this analytics is fully built in-house. It's fully custom and I want to talk a little bit about what it takes to build something like this what choices do we have right now and in future and why most importantly why did we build this in the first place when there are tools like plausible analytics or even google analytics so first things first to get the context right to set the context right what you have to understand is what fermion is and if you go to fermion.app you will get a pretty good idea about what fermion as a platform is it's basically a platform that helps you create your own platform so if you want to create a business where you are selling courses or you are creating coding labs, live classes, anything which is around technical in nature, you can use Fermion. It sits behind your platform. That means the branding is yours. The domain is yours, the website is yours, the design is yours, but the technology around it, whether that's coding labs, whether that's live classes, whether that's video processing, whether that's analytics, which is one of the things that's powered by Fermion. So I want to talk about analytics. We actually haven't even added analytics on the landing page yet. So it includes like other things right now, but what analytics basically does is that it allows you to give it allows the instructors to see how people are using their platform, right? So acme.formion.app is our internal domain. You would not be able to use it. It's just used by four or five people, which we have in the team itself or mostly for demoing other instructors. But the basic idea is that this sort of page is live for any domain, which is using Formion today, right? Now, how does this work? Well, from a technical point of view, this is a very boring setup, right? There is nothing interesting going on over here. Nothing sort of like a massive engineering feat. Nothing like that is going on here. How this works works is that let's say if you have something like acme.formion.app, right? Whenever a user loads this page, because this is a first party analytics, this is not blocked by ad blockers or, you know, you don't have to set cookies like you have to do in Google analytics and so on and so forth. So it does two things. It starts a session and it records a page view, right? So two things happen immediately when you open acme.formion.app. I mean, not you, but when I open, right? So a session is basically something which you are starting, I mean, as a, as a fresh thing. So if you open this in another tab, it will automatically start another session and another page view. Now, the way this works is that a single session can have multiple page views. And unlike a traditional application, like which navigates fully when you click on a link, you can see over form here, if I click on forms, for example, there is no hard navigation, right? When I click on any of the cell eBooks, for example, there is no hard navigation. When I go to webhooks, the smooth, the navigation is smooth. So it does not reload the whole JavaScript state in the memory, right? So we are able to retain the session that way. Number one, number two is that we are also able to retain it with the session storage itself, right? So session storage also plays a little bit of part here, but typically like if you want to implement a basic version of analytics like this, you can just implement it based on, you know, the session itself. The next thing, which is the interesting thing is the page view. Now we have both the tables for them in the database, but the basic idea is that that both of them actually just go to Postgres directly right now. So we don't do anything fancy. We don't use ClickHouse. We don't use any sort of column oriented database right away. It's just plain old simple Postgres. There are two tables. One is recording page view. One is recording session storage. If you want to add custom events also, which needs to be recorded, like checkout initiation or, you know, things like that, that you can also add. But this is the basic idea of analytics that you see over here. And there is nothing to engineering or you know too much engineering about it it's just a good service right out of the box now why did we build it why build it in the first place if you have google analytics plausible analytics the number one thing over here i mean from a technical point of view and the number one thing in general could be like you know privacy concerns for example if you are using google analytics you know it has gotten like really bad in the recent times, not only in just terms of like the ease of use, but in general, like, you know, because it's free, it uses your data, it uses it in ad targeting and so on and so forth. So privacy concerns is one thing. Second thing is the foreign key relation, right? So when I say something like this, what I mean is that right now, what you see over here, this data looks like normal data, but this is much powerful, right? So the next 
few versions of analytics which we will release not only they can have page views and visitors it can also have within this platform how many people are logged out and logged in now because this is a first party analytics system it also understands the user on the platform which in most analytics softwares is not possible unless you bring in some sort of extension or a third party thing within the product itself right because if you're using google analytics for example you have to trigger an event that the user is now logged in or trigger an event the user is not logged out and the activity between that is supposed to be like you know you have to somehow reconcile their database with your database that's that's the biggest problem like how do you reconcile their database with your database the same problem exists if you use an open source solution like plausible it's great you can self-hosted maybe you know we could have done that at, on a separate instance and called it a day but the problem would with that would be again the same thing if we want to get deep user analytics data like which specific user is doing what and not only this for example if i go to all courses i'm not sure if i can show you that on this uh, dummy account um, but yeah we do have like some of these test accounts right so if i open this detailed view you can see for example right now again all of this data is dummy so don't mind the emptiness of the dashboard but we can track this data like when was this user last seen you know how much data did they how much time did they spend percentage completion is fine but how much time did they actually spend on the platform so all of this requires us to have deep analytics on the platform right for example if let's say somebody has a refund policy of you know that you must spend at least 30 minutes learning right otherwise you can't just ask because somebody can just buy the course you know just take a look at all the videos maybe download them whatever they want to do and then just ask for rewind so these things help i mean of course this is not a, like a foolproof solution but these things help in most cases right so that's that answers the question why build it how we build it it's pretty simple you just take up a domain you just put first party analytics on it you know you just create a little bit of it's a little it's mostly like front end engineering if you want to call it in a way like how the session storage works recording a page view is interesting because now we have to constantly ping the back end also that the user is active on the page and when i am not active on the page so it, it has has like some interesting bits in code then it has to pause right because we don't want to record extra additional data for example if i'm not using this website and i just you know keep on using my browser for 10 hours that doesn't mean that i'm using that specific website for 10 hours right so we don't want to keep recording the duration of the page when you're not using it so all of those things goes over here and then finally the data goes over here now you might say that postgres is not meant for analytical data right which is a very typical thing which we hear and we know we know that this is not the end goal this is not the end you know system which we will always keep but this is something which is which makes a lot of sense at our scale right now right so if, if i have to share a few numbers our current database size is around like 120 gb plus i think i i don't have the exact number but it's like 100 gb plus at least and would have probably grown to 120 130 gb right now that's a very small size for a database right by the way just letting you know until and unless this grows into a few terabytes of data and we start seeing the real slowdown of performance and especially for you know for this analytical workload i don't think we have to move out to a database like clickhouse or you know especially if this page for example this page is not like a heavy usage page right this is used by instructors they are visiting probably it you know maybe they just keep it open so it just keeps on querying real-time data once every five seconds ten seconds and so on but it's a it's a lightweight usage page however the query is expensive i agree on that you can change the date range you can see like what happened in the last 30 days and so on so the query is expensive but still the usage right now doesn't need to be so much that we just go ahead and remove this completely and say that okay we don't want this we'd want to move to click house or something like this this likely would be our end result like let's say if you say that okay uh mehul what happens if 100 more instructors join for me on tomorrow then of course this part would start to break and it will start to show that postgres is not meant for you know websites with very high traffic and using analytics data then we will figure out the solution when then we will move to clickhouse for the analytics part maybe keep it synchronized because even with clickhouse the problem is that this foreign key constraint breaks because now what we have at least in this setup what we have is that there is a second table which is a user table obviously and this analytical data can talk with the user stable data right because of the foreign key relation which would not be there i mean you can sort of like replicate the whole data if you want but it it is like one more task which you have to do which we don't need to do at our scale right now so this is also one of the things which is important when engineering a solution when creating a solution to a problem is that you don't want to over engineer it 
you don't want to do it before i mean you can just go ahead and start creating a very complex system from day one but we need we know that we don't need it right now and the moment we need it it's possible to make a switch gradually right because there would be performance degradation at first it would not be total service collapse because uh, by the way we also use alloy db from google cloud for postgres it's a very nice setup if you want to look at alloy db this is something which i can recommend like we haven't spent a lot of time it's been just a month or so but it has been like really good for us for fermion and code dam in general and all of the analytics the whole platform right now is powered by alloy db and yeah this basically is it in general not a very engineering focused video i would say but more of a video where people you know think that oh it's very difficult to build something like analytics or how do i do that it doesn't has to be difficult you can just start building you can just start shipping and just be mindful of what the bottlenecks would be eventually i know this would be a bottleneck at some scale when we have like 100 schools 500 schools some of them are getting like a million visitors a month it would be a problem but then that is the point where we would start to shift our workload on clickhouse use that for the query processing of this sort of data cache it maybe display it then and then use Postgres only for transactional thing. But I, again, like I said, that day is a little bit far in future. And for now, every creator who's on Formion can enjoy this analytics. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Hopefully you learned something new. And if you did, make sure you leave a like. If you're interested in Formion, book a personalized demo with me or my team. Anyone can help you get started with Formion. We are doing a lot of interesting things on this product. And if you are a creator or if you know somebody who's teaching courses, especially the tech technical ones with coding labs and all of that send them our way and happy to help them set things up bonus points for you if you refer them 100% willing to send you a gift for that that's all for this one i will see you in the next video very soon